the, the national grid, water filtration systems, um, hospitals, all of those systems that if there's any kind of internet connectivity, they are vulnerable. vulnerable. Shin, what's going on? Greetings. How are you doing? Everything is wonderful. Glad to have you here. Um, for those that are aware, Shin is a foundational supporter. I never knew TV. I rebraked him. Met him in person year. Met him in person years ago. I actually re re uh, doing it reasoning with Profi, and we didn't have light. Shin provided the light, and he's been a help ever since. So we give thanks for that. Um, for those unaware, Shin has over over thirty years experience in the IT, all across NYC, and um, he's going to help us with some things that are going on right now. Chin, first thing I want to ask you is why did the FBI issue a warning against using text on iPhones and Androids? So with with text messaging between the different brands, it's not encrypted. If you go iPhone to iPhone, that message is usually encrypted, meaning it's scrambled and nobody can uh, read it, decipher it. Um, and Android to Android, same thing. But once you cross platforms, then it's not encrypted. And so that means that your messages are exposed if anyone is actually tapped into the system. And along those lines with, um, with, with the FBI warning that is along the, um, pertains to something referred to as a persistent threat where you have state actors and a state actor would be, you know, a, com a country like China or Russia or United States, because they have all the resources and lots of money to 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 attack or try to attack different resources. So that warning from the FBI is basically because China had gotten into their systems um, and it's been they were in there for months, and that shows us that back in um, 1994. Um, a law was passed requiring uh, telecommunications companies to leave a back door available so law enforcement can access communications. And anything with a back door can be compromised, right? And that's exactly what happened. China found this back door, utilized it, and was able to, to capture a lot of information. And how, cause like, I always think about when I watch these movies and just, just reasoning within myself, like, I think we don't understand how vulnerable we are in this environment due to our dependence on technology. Um, I know these things happen and I don't think people look at the severity of them, but with your expertise and knowledge, how vulnerable are we are, are we, um, due to our dependence on technology? The, the national grid, water filtration systems, um, hospitals, all of those systems that if there's any kind of internet connectivity, they are vulnerable. vulnerable. And so right now, if, if one of these state actors wanted to you know, cut off the power in parts of the United States, they could probably do that because they've been in the systems for so long that, um, and once they're in, and if they're really good at what they're doing, you may not know that they're there for a very long time. And so if they really wanted to, they could really cripple their entire country because the, the, just the power grid alone, because we don't have um, a centralized power system. So all these different um, companies throughout the country, who knows what level of security they have in place. So you have some that are vulnerable, right? So also transportation systems. They all run on computers where they use the scheduling and everything else like that. So it's gonna be a big deal if they decide to um, attack us and create havoc. And uh, uh, listening to you, this kind of goes into other thoughts I have in regards to, I know we, we're so stuck on traditional forms of warfare, but I don't mm -hmm. think we're thinking a lot. And I know we know the biological warfare, but I don't think we're thinking right. about cyber warfare. And maybe we are getting to time of cyber warfare and it seems very deadly and very quick, <laughs> you know, and the quickest way to destabilize the nation. Right. Cause that's, we've been in that situation for, for decades now. Right. And part of that is, um, 
disinformation where they can spin up hundreds and thousands of, of fake accounts and put out whatever information that they want out there to you know have people fighting against each other and destabilizing the, the that particular country or environment right so cyber warfare has been happening and it's a cat and mouse thing where you know you put in certain protections and they figure out a backdoor or um, some uh, bug in your software or hardware that they can um, circumvent or use to, to access your systems. It, that's been going on for, for decades. So that's, that's going to be the, anytime there's a conflict, a big conflict, that's going to be a key aspect of it, cyber warfare. Is there any way to know that um, someone is tapped in to your system on your phone like you should be looking out for? Most times you may not even notice it. Um, one thing that you may see is maybe your, your battery runs lower, um, runs down faster than usual, means that maybe something is running in the background. But most times if your if systems has been compromised, you probably will never know. And uh, where does VPN come into play in regards to a form of protection with this one? So v VPN creates a local network, um, an encrypted network connection between you, your system, and the other system. So it encrypts the signal and also hides some of the information, the metadata that, that would expose like where you are um, and who you are, your IP address and things like that. So a VPN is one of the ways that we try to protect our systems from being snooped on. So you'll find that most companies that have people that are remote, if they're doing their security correctly, all of them are using or requiring the use of VPNs. All right. And um, uh, what types of information, are, what types of information are on our phones that hackers can take advantage of? Everything. So contacts and your activity and that information is a gold mine to, to cyber criminals because they can use that information either to um, compromise your accounts or do identity theft. And a lot of times they actually um, sell the list of information that they get. So all those breaches that you've heard of where you know millions of records have been stolen, someone's selling that and making money off of it. And um, uh, another, I know you touched on the VPN earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, also, uh, people are, uh, they need to be aware. What are some of the things on the phone that you can't delete? Like once it's on your phone, it's not being deleted internally, regardless of what you do. There's a lot of stuff that that's not deleted. So, for instance, they will keep um, the system will keep logs of activity in terms of what applications you you're using and how long you've used them and um, your network connectivity, so whichever Wi-Fi um, access points you connect to, all of that may be stored in your phone and not deleted when you do a, a factory reset. But a factory reset does delete most of that stuff, but you know, depending on the phone and the manufacturer and how old it is um, and whether it was fully up to date, some of that stuff may remain behind. So why do some people say like your pictures and stuff are always on there? Is that really true? Yeah, your, your photos are there, but if you do a factory reset, that's usually cleared off. But one of the things that happens is when you first set up a phone, it may automatically be synchronizing your photos and other things, but primarily photos to your iCloud or your Google account. And because I've spoken to many people who didn't even realize that their stuff was being sent up into the cloud. So they feel they deleted something, but it's still there because it's still in their account in the cloud. And uh, what are some other things people can do to protect themselves moving forward? So primarily you want to make sure that all of your accounts are secured by enabling multi-factor or two-factor authentication on them. And also you do not want to reuse passwords. 
that's one of the ways that people get into your um, into your accounts if they compromise one account let's say your your email account and you reuse that password in multiple places they can spin that into access to the other systems because you reuse your password and even if you just change a couple of characters the software and the hardware and they're, they're smart enough now to kind of deduce what your passwords may be and just do a brute force with the, the breadcrumbs of information that they do have all right so um, two-factor on all your accounts especially your bank and your email accounts do not reuse passwords and you probably should start using a password manager to store all your passwords so that way when you do use a different password for all your accounts you don't have to memorize any of that or have them written down where anybody can you know peruse them right so a password manager is something that you definitely want to look into getting uh, what are some recommendations for password manager, I guess, applications? Um, Bitwarden, B-I-T-W-A-R-D-E-N, is the one that I use. I've been using it for many years, and um, it's open source, so it's, it's free, and it works very well. Um, that's the one I recommend to everyone. And in terms of multi-factor authentication, you use a separate app, and N-T-E-N-T-E, is the app that I would recommend to do that because it allows you to synchronize your uh, multi-factor codes with your computer or another device. So if you lose your phone, you're not locked out of everything that have multi-factor enabled. You can go to another device and access it without being locked out. And what are some simple things people can do to protect themselves on their computers? Um, same thing, right, in terms of making sure all your accounts are secure. Also, um, email. A lot of times they send you email that is not from a legitimate source. It looks like a legitimate source, but it may look like it's from your bank or from something that you've subscribed to. Double check to make sure that it's actually from who you think it is. So, for instance, if you get a, a notice from your bank, saying that they need you to you know verify your credentials or whatever um, there's probably going to be some links in it do not click click on links in email if this if what you can do is um you know go and call your bank or go directly to the bank's website and then message them from there to find out if it's really a legitimate request for them and not no one will ask you to log in to verify your email your username and password they never ever need to do that. And uh, last question I wanted to ask was, um, hold on, we have it here. Oh, I just I just wanted to go back to the. I'll tie it in when I edit it. I just want to go mm -hmm. back to the, um, the text messages, right? right. Um, should people be using another app to text, or is it safe to text through the regular text on your phone? if you are concerned about making sure that all your communications are encrypted then you should not be using the built-in text messaging app you should use something like um, signal messenger s-i-g-n-a-l messenger or even whatsapp but in whatsapp you have to make sure that you um, that the encryption is enabled because it may not be on your particular system especially if you've been using it for years they didn't turn that on by default. Um, so you need to double check that WhatsApp is has any um, encryption enabled. And if you're really concerned, you probably shouldn't stay with WhatsApp because you know who owns WhatsApp and you don't know, you know what they may be looking at and they tell you one thing and it could be something else, right? So Signal Messenger, if you're concerned, a lot of um, journalists use that for encrypted communications um so that way it's and it's been proven it's basically been um audited to make sure that it's actually secure and it's not leaking any information there is if i shouldn't come like we gotta be back <laughs> yo go like we have chim back on here so we really give thanks for the reason and fire and um right, I, I take thanks. you'll be there the 29th right Yes, definitely. All right, then. All right. Yes. So we give thanks for uh, anyone tuning. We will be at 
the Aito Kitchen, 1032 Union Street, uh, on December 29th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Our version, bringing in the 2025 Roots Rock Reggae section and the great Vaughn All-Star Culture Cartel will be there also. And Chin will be there with his cameras yes. capturing yes. the moments. And if anyone needs to get any additional information, um, so you can go to my website, rootsmanchin.com, R-O-O-T-S-M-A-N-C-H-I-N.com. List of information there to um, help you back up your systems and protect your systems and yourselves and your privacy. And for those that are aware, Chin's the one that got I never knew TV.com started. He had to walk me through, through the whole <laughs> domain five and everything. So we give yeah, thanks for that. My, my pleasure. Yeah, serious thing. Cool, cool. Let me stop this. All right, give thanks. Um,